Hey guys, what's happening? So, welcome to part two of the Road Taco 40 restoration. So I did a part one where I just kind of did an introduction to it. Um, I'm kind of getting a lot of CDs, so I need to figure out which one I'm gonna, which ones I'm going to keep because I can't keep them all. I, mean, I guess I could keep them all, but it's I'm probably only going to use one. I mean, I just want to be able to listen to sideband and talk, you know, more of like an emergency preparation type of situation, but, um, so I want to clean these things up, and I'm probably going to recap the one I decided to keep, but I'm trying to compare which ones have the best receive. So I have the, the Road Talker 40, the base station, which is incredible, but it's just so, so big it doesn't want to fit on my desk here, you know, and I created some mounts here for the CD mounts, and yeah, you know, 3D printed, Restored the two pill uh, amplifier. Got the SWR meter over there. So I just want to finish up. I want to get one more radio in there. Um, you know, two radios. One is a primary, one is a backup. Um, and I have this original Japanese made President Grant, which sounds pretty good on the receive too. Then I also have a Teddy R, originally what I got in the CB bundle, which everything works in that thing. Actually, th these present radios are incredible. So I'm trying to figure out do I stick with the present? Where do I go with this one? Um, this one's this one's a little bit more modern. I mean, this is probably about five or ten years newer than these ones right here. I'm guessing this one's from the '80s. It was made in Taiwan, so um, yeah, the earlier radios like this one was made in Japan. So, and what's funny is they're made by the same company. They're they're both made by Unity, the, the main boards. So, um, this is just a newer version slightly than this one right here. You can tell, as I said, there everything's kind of moved over to Taiwan, and then it went to like Malaysia and the Philippines, and then then to China. So, um, do I keep the Japanese one or do I keep this one? But at the minimum, I at least want I want to clean this up. But this because this, this radio looks like it's in the best shape out of all of them. So, um, all right. So I'm going to take the covers off again and double check the caps again. Um, you might looked at them already. They look they actually look fantastic. I didn't see any leaking caps or bolting caps. Um, but like I said, this radio is probably 40 years old, so, um, you know, Road Tuckers are, are good radios, you know I mean? They're not, like, this one was Japanese made, the, the, the base station. Can't figure out who makes the main board. Some people say Hitachi, but, um, it was definitely made in Japan, though, but this one, like I said, is, is Taiwan one, so. This actually shares the same main board as the 146 GTL Cobra. So it's basically a 146 cover GTL. Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards this this one just because I already have a power mic. Like I, got, I got a power mic, which this thing is ultra rare. I already have a power mic for it, which came with that radio. So I'm thinking I might stick with that, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I designed that a, a couple days ago, the mic holder. And then the, the top shelf is to keep dust off the mics, like the top cover like that. So. All right, so I'm gonna take this down. I'm gonna clean the covers off, and then uh, clean the faceplate off. It looked like it was like in a garage. Get some more in here. So it looked like it was in a garage with paint or something in there. So there's a lot of paint speck. But I'm gonna try to be really careful because the faceplate's really clean. I just need to get in there and see if I can get that dirt off there. Oh yeah, the SWR cal thing doesn't seem to work either. So I'm gonna go down to here. Like nothing even moves. I know you're supposed to hit the transmit, but. Yeah, I couldn't get it to move last night, so there's I gotta look at that thing, this potentiometer here. Maybe put some deoxid in there, clean it. Check the wires maybe too. Hopefully I don't I didn't see any mods, but you never know. So here's a closer closer look at the inside again. So yeah, like I was saying, this is based on the 146 GTL board. It's a um, PC eight three three AE. Um but it looks very, very clean on the inside. So I think we're just going to wipe this down with some water, maybe. Um, a little bit of corrosion there. I guess I could do alcohol, too, but I don't know. If, sometimes the alcohol can mess with the paint. Um, um, also, it has like this white stuff where it was mounted below before, so let's see if I can get that off there. I'm going to take the speaker off, and then um, let's see if I can clean that up real fast. Even though, this, even though this has a little dust on it. I'm just going to use some Dawn and soap and water, and then if it doesn't come off, then I'll use some alcohol, but... Like I said, I've actually had alcohol where it left kind of blemishes, you know? So, um, but then you can come, kind of go back over some silicone and really gloss it up. All right, so I've got the uh, pots off here. So the 
the one that seemed like it was having issues was, like I said, the SWR. So I, try, I kept these in, in um, this one here. So I wonder if I can get, yeah, it looks like the more modern board. So let's see if I can get this face cover off here. Um, because I want to get into that pot and get some, test it with my multimeter. Um, but you also want to clean that face out. But I kept them in order. So it's interesting you have a couple of these metal pots and then, because oh, that's a lot of charge. Um, all right, so two screws get the faceplate off here. Do I need to take the other off? Yeah, because it'll make it a lot easier to clean if I can get the faceplate off. All right, like so um, I was trying to take the face cover off, but it seems like I'd have to desolder the the meter there. So I might just I'm gonna try to gently get that dirt off there little water and a paper towel here, but if not, then I'll go back to rubbing alcohol. Um, I just want to take any of that paint off, that black paint off. And right, so here's a close up. I just did a quick wipe down with water. Probably won't be able to see that in the light. There's still little white specks. That's what I'm talking about. It looks like some paint got some paint over spray in there. Alright, looks like rubbing alcohol did the trick. Now, this is gonna turn out to be a really clean radio. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get some deoxid down in those uh, pots here on the front um, because it's, it's going to be really hard to take this face plate off. I'm going to have to desolder the, what's it called, the uh, SWR meter. So I should be able to, let's see if I have a little silk in there. Yeah, I don't know, like I said, it just didn't seem like it was, it was responsive. So I'm going to look at the solder joints too. Alright, so I had this thing sitting here for a couple of bit, a little bit, trying to get that deoxid, the silk into those pots. So hopefully I can, like I said, it will come down to the front, this, the stem right there. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm probably not going to be, like I said, most of my listings done on SDR, typically on my screen right here. Um, so really I just need it as like an emergency transmitter. Um, yeah, actually, well, those lights turned out actually pretty good. Fix those later night. Um, all right, so, all right, let that soak. And then top cover, let me bring the top cover back in. I mean, top covers turned out great. All I did was use a little Dawn soap and water, and that's it. But I can still see a couple white specks here and there, and I'm not going to worry about it that much. Um, all right, so yeah, so what I was saying is like you can see like sometimes the rubbing alcohol. I put a little bit of deoxid on the face of it, get it in there. Sometimes the rubbing alcohol can kind of make it a little faded, so you can usually go back with over like silicone or some kind of lubrication, and it'll actually make it all shiny again. Alright, this pot's aren't looking that great, so I'm going to put a little deoxid in there. So, yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Alright, let this soak. All these little pots here. Okay, and then over here. Over here. Okay, take it on. Okay. Yeah, I live at the beach, so this stuff is going to be put on the microphone jack. Yeah, I live at the beach, so like this stuff will corrode, corrode really fast here. Which I'm just I don't know if I got that one. All right. And I like to get that set back on. So I'm going to use some of my trim adhesive. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this. It's probably not a good idea, but let's see. I think it's gonna thick. Jeez, yeah, this is not. <laughs> All right. What's funny is it came out thinner. It's just the way I was spraying it. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, yeah, it was weird. Is it was a lot thinner. Now it's more globby. All right, that's probably a fail, but I'm sure it's gonna work. So I'm gonna use my finger to make it spread it out a little bit. All right, so I think overall it turned out pretty good. Um, this, I'm, I'm assuming this is actually like a vibration damper, so the metal doesn't rattle. Um, oh yeah, so I wanted to get that back on. Got that little side ticker back on there. All right, so it looks like the deoxid fixed the, uh, the, the SWR switch there. Um, so. 
Yeah, it wasn't it, before it wasn't responding at all. Let's go down to it. Something on the needle seems like it's stuck. It won't go all the way back to zero. I might get the other things back on. Um, I do actually have another meter I bought for my, my other radios, but. Yeah, these, these meters, I took one apart the other day trying to fix it, and I actually kind of got it to work. I had to resolder one of the coils and everything on it, but like, man, it's it's like a it's like a watch almost how precise it has to be. So very hard to figure. Well, it's not hard to figure out. It's just hard to get it dialed in perfectly. Oh, that looks pretty good. So the spacing's not the same as I know this is sort of tilted forward, but the spacing's not the same between the modern um, Cobra Twenty Nine and the Road Talker. So it's like an inch back. So. Um, I guess like what I was telling you, maybe the next revision of this mount, um, I'll create an additional hole so you can move this stuff up and down to kind of keep the, I think I'll do that. That way you can get the faces aligned. So I'll make more holes so you can actually get them so the faces are aligned flat in case they're not, you know, exactly uh, even with each other. So, um, all right, I'm kind of torn between this this radio and that radio. I don't know because that one looks so. It looks now, since I've cleaned it up, it looks like a new radio. Um, plus, I have the power module already, you know. So right now, there's a lot of crazy amount of chatter. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do some do some of the whole spacing. Um, yeah, so me, I'll print out a new mail right now. Um, yeah, look at that. Just not up chatter. You know, I wonder if the last couple of days was better. Not just all these idiots on the radio. Um, all right, cool. Awesome radio. Got him back in action. All right.